If you're a mom, you should be able to talk about boobs. <laughs> Today I am 30 weeks and three days pregnant. I think that's right. We are officially in the countdown to meet baby Scooby. I cannot believe how fast this 30 weeks has creeped up on me and the fact that I only have less than 10 weeks until my due date is pretty insane. So this week was super exciting because I did get an ultrasound and I will talk more about that in a little bit. First, I'm gonna talk about my symptoms this week. This week I've been having a lot of sore boobs. Sorry if that's totally TMI. If you're a mom, you should be able to talk about boobs. I've breastfed for a total of about five years now if you like put it all together the amount of time that I've spent breastfeeding is equivalent to about five years total <laughs> as much as I've breastfed you would think that my boobs would like be used to this by now but I guess since I stopped breastfeeding Landon before this pregnancy which is the first time that that's really happened my breasts have been just getting ready for breastfeeding again as many kids that I have had and I've breastfed it still always feels the same in the beginning you still get like the sore cracked nipples and stuff like that so I'm not excited for that part but I am sort of excited to like breastfeed a little newborn again you know it's been a long time I stopped breastfeeding in February and I got pregnant the end of February so I guess I really didn't have that much of a break my breasts have been getting sore they're like sore on the sides they're very sensitive like to the touch so I'm guessing that's just my body prepping for another two years of breastfeeding one of my main symptoms this week and it sucks so bad I already knew that the baby was head down and I already knew that the baby was posterior but I wasn't sure if it was like still in that position and when I had my ultrasound it was confirmed that the baby is still head down and still posterior all of a sudden this week I have been having excruciating lower back pain like almost on my tailbone like it's down that far and so I like went to dr. Google of course I knew that a posterior baby caused a lot of problems during labor I didn't realize that posterior babies can have an effect on your body like during pregnancy also so because the baby is getting so big and is already head down and like in that kind of position it's putting a lot of pressure on my lower back and lower spine and it seems like a lot of other people in the world have this problem as well and I just get this like excruciating back pain and it's like it's almost like a, a dull constant pain in my back <laughs> literally so if anybody has suggestions for turning a posterior baby even though I still have a lot of time and I'm sure everything will be fine once like the time for delivery comes I still have a long time before that if I could get this pressure off my back that would certainly be nice I did look up a few different like positions that you can like sit in and stuff to encourage baby to turn around but I don't know if anyone has any good suggestions I would gladly take them sleeping at night has been a struggle more so than it was before I almost feel like I have to sleep kind of propped up in order to get into a comfortable position I talked about the pregnancy pillow that I bought and that thing has been a lifesaver for me I sleep with it religiously every single night like I've pretty much kicked off any other pillow in my bed and I just like wrap myself into that all night long <laughs> another thing that I noticed this week on a slightly better note is that I feel like my varicose veins are not getting worse I don't know if that makes any sense but like every week they've get, gotten like progressively worse and these past few weeks I've noticed that they're actually slightly better and they still look hideous don't get me wrong there are so many and it's so bad it just feels like they're not quite as bad recently but I have been wearing my compression stocking a lot of you guys have noticed it in pictures I only wear it on the my one problem leg I don't wear it on both legs because additional clothing is especially when you're pregnant in the Central Valley in the summer it's miserable and so I wear like the least amount of clothing possible <laughs> but I've been doing a very 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 good job of being very consistent with wearing my compression stocking at least on that one leg and I definitely noticed a difference thank god so hopefully that continues to get better because those things are just ruining my life the other thing this week is that I can feel the baby in my ribs now obviously the baby gets bigger every single week and this is the first week that I've really noticed it like physically like touching my ribs so that's very uncomfortable but that's like typical third trimester symptoms is should just be miserable the whole time so that's what I am <laughs> so that's pretty much it for symptoms this week if you guys are following me on Facebook or Instagram or something like that you've probably already seen our ultrasound pictures but if not of course I'm gonna show you guys now so basically this is how it went down if you haven't watched my last pregnancy vlog go do that and I talk about how the baby was just not cooperating whatsoever so we went back the next day 
day and tried it again and the baby was actually in a worse position than it was the day before so I got like a USB of all of our pictures and he only printed out some of them but this picture right here you can see the baby was completely covering his or her face up it had its hands in front of his face like this and then it had its feet in front of it crossed like this in front of its hands so I mean it was just giving us the worst time ever I know we wanted this baby to be like a surprise as far as like if it's a boy or a girl but this baby just wants to be a surprise like all around so luckily our ultrasound tech was super amazing and was able to get at least some pretty decent pictures of the baby to kind of get an idea of what he or she looks like we spent probably about 40 minutes between the two visits trying to get pictures of this kid and total we maybe got to see the actual face for like three minutes so I'll show you the pictures that I do have of this baby I have we got some black and white pictures and then I got some some of like the 3d or HD pictures as well so I guess I'll show you these ones first this right here is the baby's umbilical cord and so that's the nose and the eye and the mouth and you can see like the little chin right there this is just another one they're all pretty similar because like I said we didn't get much variety with the kid and then there's another one there and again that's the umbilical cord but the reason why it was being so difficult is because the face was into the placenta completely so it was so hard to get pictures but there is another one there and again you can see the cord and then that's all placenta that's what that is it looks angry in that one and there's a little like side view of it and then this right here that white part is the placenta so you can see how pushed up against the baby's face the placenta is and why it was so hard to get pictures those are all the black and white pictures that we got printed out and then we have um these pictures as well like i said they're all kind of about the same we didn't get much variety with them there's that one there the baby just looked angry the whole time it was like get this thing out of my face i don't want you guys to see me so it looked mad <laughs> So there's another one there, and you can see those big old lips it has. There is another one there, and you can see it's kind of pushing its little lips out a little bit. And there's another one. Like I said, these are all pretty similar. So we got what we could, and then he did measurements on the baby, and I just really hope these measurements are a little bit off. According to like all the apps that I have, and I know like babies all grow at different rates, but all of the little apps told me that the baby should be somewhere around like two and a half pounds. The ultrasound tech measured the head and like some of the bones and the stomach and stuff like that to kind of give you an estimate of how much he or she weighs right now and the head alone was measuring 32 weeks or almost 32 weeks it was like 31 weeks and six days so I'm just like are you kidding me I have to push that thing out and I was 29 weeks and five days when he did the measurement so the head is measuring like two weeks ahead which means this kid has a big old head and the stomach again was measuring like 31 weeks and something days and overall the baby was measuring like two weeks ahead of what my real due date is and so I asked him I was like does that mean I can like expect this baby sooner and he's like since your all of your other ultrasounds were very accurate in terms of like what the baby was measuring what your due date was we don't change due dates this late so pretty much you're just gonna have a big kid so I was like that's great when you put it all together the baby was measuring three pounds and 12 ounces so basically four pounds that's like almost double what it should be at that time in pregnancy and I always make the joke because if you look at all my kids and like their weight at birth I had a five pounder a six pounder a seven pounder and an eight pounder because Caden was five pounds Kai Kyson was six pounds, Lilia was seven pounds, Landon was eight pounds. I was like, this one's gonna be my nine pounder. <laughs> it either has to be four pounds or it has to be nine pounds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say this is gonna be a nine pounder, but I hope not. Just please let it not be. I don't know if you can really tell in any of these pictures, but in the ultrasound, you could already see like a little neck roll. So this kid is gonna be chunky and it's gonna be so cute. <laughs> but other than that, that was really all that happened at the ultrasound. A bunch of my family and friends came and it was so funny because like, I've had the same ultrasound tech for for the my entire pregnancy and he knows what I'm having because he had to do like the anatomy scan and everything he had to do all the measurements he like turned off the screen for us so he is the only person in the entire world that knows what I am having right now and my whole family was like trying to bribe him to get him to tell them but he didn't because I wouldn't let him it was just really funny because they're just like can you just like slip it in the other area like go down to the other half like the baby's so big now to where you don't have to like you, you won't like accidentally see something you have to like purposely go all the way down down there to do it and I like prevented him from going in that area whatsoever when he was doing the measurements of the baby I made him turn the screen off so nobody could 
see it and my family hates me. But they all understand, they're just giving me a hard time about it. The anticipation is the hardest part of it all. And then I'm here, I think I'm like the only one in the world that doesn't want to find out. Everybody else is kind of like, okay, let's know what it is, I want to know what it is. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it for this week. I can't think of much else to talk about, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my 30 week belly. All right, so here is with the shirt on. You can see, like, I'm wearing my compression stocking right now. I try not to wear shorts in public too often because look at the difference between my skin color and the compression stocking. It's so obvious. But you know what? I gotta do what I gotta do. So here's with the shirt on. Sorry, I've got, like, lines all over me from my pants. It looks like I'm at 41 and 3 quarters. Just about, so I'm doing some like steady growing every week it seems like, which I guess is good. Yeah, 41 and three quarters I'd say. Before I forget, I totally forgot about this. I finally decided on like a first outfit for the boy and a first outfit for the girl, like if it's a boy or if it's a girl. So what I decided is that when the baby is born, it's gotta have like a first outfit, you know? So like technically it'd be like the going home outfit, but since I'm already gonna be at home, I got a boy outfit and a girl outfit. The outfits aren't complete yet, I just got the first part of them, but I ordered these onesies and they're custom made from my friend who has her own boutique. So I will link her information down below. I highly recommend her, she's awesome. She made these onesies and they are so freaking adorable. So I got like long sleeved uh, onesies and they both say the same thing. So let me, so here are each of the onesies and they both say, hello, I'm new here, but one is obviously for a girl and one is for a boy. So I am just so in love with these. I was like looking around everywhere. I could not decide. So I had her make these and the girl's outfit, what I'm gonna do is like buy a little skirt and a little headband with it. And for the boy's outfit, I'm gonna order like a little pair of leggings that go with it and maybe like a beanie or something, but so cute, right? Like, oh my God. God, tell me that is not the cutest thing in the world. Freaking adorable. That is pretty much it though, you guys. So make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'll have all those links down below as well. And other than that, I will talk to you guys next week for week 31. Bye. I drive quite a bit. It's more awkward if I look at the camera.